Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in Atlanta, Georgia, it's time for Workplace Wisdom. Sharing insight, perspective, and best practices for creating the planet's best workplaces. Now, here's your host. Welcome to another exciting and informative edition of Workplace Wisdom. Stone Payton here with you this afternoon. Please join me in welcoming to the broadcast with Make a Difference Consulting, Alicia J. Alexander. How are you? Great. Thank you for having me this afternoon. Well, it is a delight to have you on the program. Today's topic, Authentic Appreciation in the Workplace, what is it and uh, and why do we care? <laughs> well, let me start like this. 79% of people who leave their jobs do not leave because they're leaving for money's sake. They leave because they don't feel they're contributing to something that's meaningful. And so as a business owner, you want to retain your staff and mitigate high um, turnover costs. The best way to do that is to show them that you care about them, you recognize their individuals, and you recognize they bring value and uh, appreciate your employees. Man, that is a sobering statistic. That uh, I mean, in um, instinctively, everything you're describing makes perfect sense. But wow, that's a yeah, man, that's a huge number. That's what the stats show. <laughs> <laughs> and so, but to get at this, I mean, there's there's the attention to the individual, but we've got to 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 sustain, maintain this. We've got to impact the the whole workplace culture, don't we? Absolutely, yes. The best way to do that is what I um, from a book that I teach is called the Five Languages of Appreciation in the Workplace. And why that is, is significant is because each one of us have innate value, intrinsic value. But we need to speak to that intrinsic value with authentic appreciation. Um, there are five um, languages of appreciation, and we all have a primary and a secondary and um, if you're ready, I can go into that more if you wish. Well, I do want you to go into it because I'm I'm curious, like what maybe what mine is, like what do I want, right? <laughs> so yeah, absolutely, lay it absolutely. Well, the first one is called words of affirmation. That's saying a meaningful, positive word, more than just "good job." It speaks to what the person is contributing to the work environment in a positive, affirming way. And 46% of the population have that as their primary or secondary language. The second one is called quality time. That's like hanging out with the, with the colleague or your circle of influence on the job, um, just spending quality time. The third one is access service. That's being able to recognize somebody needs a little assistance and pitching in and doing it in a way that they would want it to be done just to say, hey, I, I recognize you're doing something here. You need a little help. I want to help. The fourth one is tangible gifts. Nothing extravagant because it's in the workplace, but something that's meaningful to that person that you're giving the gift to. And the last one is physical touch. Now, physical touch is limited in the workplace to handshakes, fist bumps, pat on the backs, and high fives. Nothing more than that. <laughs> I'm glad you clarified. <laughs> that makes perfect <laughs> sense. Uh, and so um, I'm, I'm kind of thinking through the team. And th the way we're structured here at the Business Radio X Network we work with other entrepreneurs in various communities and they're licensed to run their own business radio X studio in a given community. They don't really report to me, but it's still a, it's still a cohesive team. We have best practices. We, you know, we, we share what we learn in our own communities and uh, you know, we had this, this great kind of uh, 
community of, of practice, I guess. But I think as you're laying those out for me personally, anyway, uh, both from my client base, my, the guests who come through, uh, the, one of the studios that I personally, uh, work in and, um, and from my business radio X family, I think I'm part of that big number of, uh, hadn't really thought about it, but I, I the, the words of affirmation, I, that's probably a big one for me. Wow. You know, it, there's two ways to find out if you really want to know what specific language is yours. We do ask for what we call the managing by um, appreciation inventory assessment. And um, we can give, we can have you take an assessment to find out how do you like to be appreciated from whom you want that appreciated and how you convey that you, you desire appreciation. Um, it's, a, it's probably like a 20 minute task, um, our assessment, um, but it gives you accurate information. And the other way you can find out is just have a conversation with your circle of influence. Hey, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about such and such. How do you feel about being appreciated? What do you like? Hey, it makes a lot of sense to me. And it sounds like, like fun work if you, and rewarding work if, if you can get it. <laughs> it is. What's the backstory, Alicia? How, how did you get into this line of work? Well, presently, I'm a doctoral student at Grand Canyon University hmm. in Arizona, Phoenix, Arizona. Um, I'll be at, I live in Rhode Island, so I'm, I'm doing my studies online. And my major or my program of study is organizational leadership with an emphasis on organizational development, quality research. Hmm. And so the fact that I had the opportunity to work with people and specifically, specifically um, work cultures is very much aligned with what I'm studying. Um, I intend to graduate in 2025 with my doctorate, but having this opportunity to offer and to um, affect change in organizations is right aligned with what I'm studying. So the next time we do this, it'll be Dr. Alicia. <laughs> Dr. A. Yes, I intend to have it happen. Like that. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about, uh, let's talk about the work a little bit. You've got these five languages, I think, uh, of appreciation. You, you referred to them. Tell me about the work. Like you come into an organization and, and what happens? Let me tell you a little history about the five languages of appreciation. Dr. Gary Chapman, that many might recognize for the five love languages, took this concept of the five love languages after being persuaded by many people in the indus different various industries to the workplace. And he partnered with Dr. Paul White, who has a tremendous business ac acumen. So together, they got into companies like Merit Trust Credit Union. They worked with people in Heinz, various major organizations across the country and actually across the globe. That so what happens is they'll ask the question. And if you don't mind me, I'll ask you the question. On a scale of one to 10, how do you feel appreciated by your circle of influence? When they refer business to me or tell someone else about how much they've enjoyed being on a show or working with me? Yes. Yeah, that, that right there. That, that, that makes it for me. Okay. So from there, depending on the size of the organization, we can give them the assessment and find out the different languages that each of the employees have as well as giving them information about each language, more than just saying what the name of the language is and um, the percentage of the population that have it. I, actually, as we get, if we've given the assessment, we can specifically say to the organization what percentage of your workforce has that particular language and derive a plan to say, okay, when this person is in need of appreciation or would refer somebody to say, 
let's use the words, words of affirmation as an example. We'll perform a word of um, affirmation. They will have some kind of cue or something um, that says on their, like a little, I don't want to call it a plaque, but like a little sign on their um, cubicle that says, these are my languages, you know, um, uh, you're open to, you know, appreciate me anytime, you know, something like that. But it, it opens, it gives the opportunity to communicate, and that's what I want to use, communicate that appreciation to the employee with that specific language, i.e., words of affirmation in a way that, you know, at any time, colleague to colleague, superior to subordinate uh, or to employee, um, communicate that uh, that word of, of affirmation so they all understand that, you know, when we recognize you, you are valuable, you are appreciated. And we thank you know, thank you for being here, participating with us. Well, and that's the thing, though, right? If you've got a team of any size and complexity, you're going to have them all over the map, right? You're going to have some that really lean into words of affirmation. Absolutely, gonna, absolutely. And so that's gotta, why. That's why having the sign there is, um, on the cubicle usually works for knowing who and which um, appreciation language applies to that person. And then there's knowing that and words of affirmation. And I might be able to come off the top of my head with a little bit of language to help me communicate that, but I'm operating under the impression that there's coaching, consulting, direction, guidance in the book, and maybe in training and facilitation. Absolutely, yes. On how to do it. <laughs> right. Absolutely, yes. So Absolutely. you've been at this a while now. Uh what, two what's, years. <laughs> what, what's the most rewarding for you? What's the most fun about it for you? I love talking about it. I, I educate, I coach, and I speak on the subject of authentic appreciation in the workplace. I, I, I don't know if the way I say I love the education, but I like the uh, speaking more. So, so you're out doing like um, doing talks to groups of people and speaking on, on this topic. Yes. So what is that like? Like, does, is it ever, I always ask this of, you know, people who do professional speaking, is it a, is it a little bit nerve wracking to get up there in front of a bunch of people and, and remember what I to say? I enjoy it. I enjoy it. It's, um, ever since I was a little girl, I've always enjoyed being on stage or in front of people. So, um, it doesn't make me nervous or anything. I, I just enjoy it because, I feel, especially with the authentic appreciation in the workplace, I'm doing something to help them, you know, my, my, my audience. And so when I convey, um, knowledge, I'm empowering my audience to make changes or see value in what I'm saying and, and implement it in their daily lives or their work lives. And you're writing too, right? Like you, you contribute to to other pieces of written work on this topic and and others. You're you're a busy lady. I try to be. It keeps me out of trouble. <laughs> so, how does the whole sales and marketing thing work for this? I mean, do do you find that people are? Is your phone ringing and they're coming to you because the book's so popular, or do you find that you have to have some sort of sales and marketing strategy to get into the conversations with the executives who can write the check to have you come in and help them? Well, it's a little bit of both. It's, a, it's um, strategizing as well as receiving inquiries. Um, I like the strategizing more, though. You know, being able to send out a post on social media or um, speak as I am now um, to a general audience, um, it's really, I think it's really rewarding and very effective to communicate, um, top, you know, on this topic of authentic appreciation in the workplace. And they don't let just anybody read the book and go out and start teaching it, right? Like you went through some sort of formal certification process to be like the, the ordained 
facilitator and get the lapel pin and all that, right? Yes. And maybe not the lapel pin, but to be <laughs> recognized. Um, recently, uh, Dr. Paul White and I was on Voice of America um, together and it had sort of like how we are doing now on a podcast. So to be able to be in the presence um, with Dr. Paul White, um, it was really rewarding, very rewarding to hear from him. Because, I mean, it's one thing to read the book, but to actually sit and be on a podcast with the co-author is like, wow. So I was <laughs> excited about that. I'll bet. Well, I don't know when you would find the time, but, uh, you know, pursuing the, your doctorate, and 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 doing this work and and the writing and the and the speaking, but uh, what what uh, passions, interests, hobbies do you pursue outside the scope of this work? Do you do you nerd out about anything else, or is it all heads down around this stuff? Well, I'm very active in my church, which is Awakening Church in Smithville, Rhode Island, um, and I love being around my family. So I think my daughter or my son want to do I'm I'm with them you know so make my time for family sort of like the Mary Kay cosmetics people put God first family second and all else fall after that you know well it you know what it brings up an interesting topic and I think it's probably quite related everything you're learning and teaching with regard to the five languages I, I suspect there's a great deal of application in your personal and, and family life for practicing this as well, yeah? Yes, yes. Um, my daughter is very very much a, a professional marketer, and to be able to help her out, out with dishes or, you know, um, help her out with, her, with my granddaughter, um, speaks of quality time, acts of service, um, just giving her a, a kind word, words of affirmation. So yeah, I do practice it in my in my personal life as well. I'll bet. All right. Um, I want I'd like to wrap if we could around maybe just a a few. I call them pro tips. Some things for us to be thinking about. And look, guys, the the number one pro tip is get your hands on this book. Reach out, have a conversation with Alicia, somebody on her team, you know, uh, look into the, the, the training, the consulting, getting your hands on the assessment. But between now and then, maybe some things that we ought to be kind of having our, our eyes and ears open to, some additional things we ought to be reading, maybe even some things we ought to be uh, conscious about uh, doing or not doing that'll help us get a little bit better, you know, just r right after we are, are done listening to this conversation. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. Um, I, I want to share that, you know, since COVID, our workforce has changed. Um, we have remote workers, we have hybrid workers, we have those who are in the office under one um, organization. And it's important that we convey appreciation to each type of employee, whether it's remote, whether hybrid or in office. And so finding an opportunity to have just, a, you know, a beginning conversation about authentic appreciation and how they value appreciation in their work, how it makes a difference in the organization, um, it's, it's a big deal. You know, it's, it's a contributing factor to retaining your employees as a business owner and for the employee to value and being participatory in the work environment, the work culture. Well, and that's a word that you have used several times in this conversation, and I don't want to gloss over it, but you've gone to some lengths to always use the word authentic. And I'm yes. sure a person can sense it, whether they're doing it um, consciously or not, they can sense pretty quickly if you're just kind of handing out a little quick platitude versus genuinely expressing appreciation in the language that's, that's best for them. There's a lot to this authentic piece of it, isn't there? Yes. Yes. Um, um, there, there are opportunities where people 
whether it be the supervising manager, owner, or employee, will not feel that they want to show appreciation. But sometimes you have to discount your feelings and go ahead and say a, a kind word or a nice gesture or give a gift, discounting how you're feeling. Because feelings follow actions, you know? Mm-hmm. So, you know, it, it's important to just realize that you have an opportunity to convey honest feelings as far as showing appreciation. And, and finding something to genuinely appreciate them about. I don't, I don't guess you'd have to appreciate every single aspect of them 24-7 a day, but I bet that you could... <laughs> I had a mentor that used to call this uh, good finding, you know, like there, there, there's something you can appreciate about virtually anyone. And, and if not, then maybe it is time to revisit and free, free up their future. But for in most situations, there ought to be something you can appreciate them, uh, appreciate about them. Right. Absolutely. Yes. Um, And you know, no no one is a hundred percent evil and no one's a hundred percent good. So <laughs> there's always going to be something that you can appreciate somebody for. All right. So what's the best way for our listeners to learn more, tap into this book, uh, maybe get their, their hands on, get some access to the assessment, have a conversation with you. Is there a, a website or a good way to connect with you? Yes. Um, I can be reached at 401-601. 3207 or Alicia, A L I C I A, at make a difference consulting.com. And the website is make a difference consulting.com. Alicia, thank you for investing the time and the energy to visit with us this afternoon. Thank you for your insight and your perspective. And Keep up the good work. What you're doing is is so important and can have such an impact in, in any given moment, but well beyond that. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so for having me. I really appreciate this opportunity. My pleasure. All right. Until next time, this is Stone Payton for our guest today, Alicia J. Alexander with Make a Difference Consulting and everyone here at the Business Radio X family saying we'll see you again on Workplace Wisdom.